Good evening, everyone. Trust everyone is having a good public holiday. And well, the reason we have the public holiday or the national holiday is it's St. Patrick's Day. So it would be remiss of me not to speak on St. Patrick today on St. Patrick's Day. So that's what I'm doing. That's why it's called From Slave to Servant. And I'm just going to be speaking on, on a little bit about who he was and who he is and, and the legacy he left. And far be it from an Australian to teach uh, Irish about their uh, patron saint of the country. I, I'm, what I'm going to be doing is just reading from his own hand where Patrick wrote his confession or his confessio. So I'm going to be reading a small excerpt from that just to honour St. Patrick and, and what he did and the legacy he left. But what do we remember? And I was thinking about it, like what would St. Patrick want to be remembered for? And looking into his background and, and who he was and the legacy he left, you know, there are, we have these different ideas, not just in Ireland, but around the world of, of who he is and who he was and, and, and what he stood for. And, and you know, we have you know, stories and myths and relics of St. Patrick. And you know, we have the story that he drove all of the snakes out of Ireland and you know, we have relics that uh, are revered in, in here in Ireland. You know, he, we have his bell and the breastplate or the hymn, you know, his jawbone, his tooth, his crozier or his staff. And we have all these pilgrimage sites across Ireland, like, you know, Croke Patrick would be a, a fairly famous one, where pilgrims, not just from Ireland, but around the world would come and, 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 and because of St. Patrick. So I'm going to be reading from his Confessio shortly, but what does St. Patrick mean to us as Christians? And what would St. Patrick really have wanted his legacy to be? I really feel that this part in his Confessio sums it up. I'm going to read it. It said, this is from his own hand, and this is a letter that he wrote. Just, there's two letters that he left. This is one of the letters, uh, and it's called his Confessio, his Confession, before he died. He writes this. It is right that we should fish well and diligently, as the Lord directs and teaches when he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And again, he says through the prophets, behold, I send many fishers and hunters, says God. And other such sayings, therefore, it is very right that we should cast our nets so that a great multitude and crowd will be taken for God. Also, that there should be clerics to baptize and encourage a people in need and want. This is what the Lord says in the gospel. He warns and teaches in these words. Go, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the ends of the age. Again, he says, Go out, therefore, to the whole world and announce the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And yet again, the gospel of the kingdom will be announced all over the world as testimony to all the nations. And then will come the end. In the same way, the Lord foretold this through the prophet, as he said, and it shall come, it will, it will come about in the last days, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young people will see visions and your older people will, will dream dreams. Indeed, on my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. Hosea says, I will name the one who has obtained mercy in the place where it was said, you are not my people. There they will be called children of God. This really sums up St. Patrick to me that he came originally to Ireland as a slave you know he was 16 and by his own admission and his own writings he was 16 uneducated and and really unbelieving and when he came to Ireland he spent six years as a slave on the hills the beautiful hills of Ireland in rain hail and snow and he would get up before the sun and he would offer up to 100 prayers a day to the Lord this is where St. Patrick built his relationship with God this is where his calling in the kingdom really developed. After six years, he went home and, and I don't think that thought or that love of Ireland ever left him. And he had a dream and, and this is all in his own hand. In that dream, he was visited by an Irishman 
and he had a bunch of letters with him. And one, he gave him one of the letters and, and Patrick in his dream read the letter and it said on the top, the voice of the Irish people. St. Patrick, many years later, came back to Ireland and he spent his days here. And he was responsible for establishing and spreading Christianity in a pagan nation across this country. And Ireland has such, now has such a rich heritage of Christianity and, and actually 1500 years of Christianity, of, of rich heritage. And it says that after St. Patrick evangelised in Ireland, that so many Irish people took hold of the truth. It said that so many Irish went to Europe with the gospel to, to be missions, that they were like bees swarming across the continent. This has happened for centuries. You know, Ireland has been known as the land of saints and scholars. And there's so many Irish people that have gone out and taken the, the word to the world. And this is what I see as St. Patrick. We have this St. Patrick's Day celebrated all around the world. You know, even in Cambodia, there was a cross section of the community that we saw celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You know, it, it is in a lot of countries, you know, even to the point where, you know, there are massive parades through cities and iconic buildings illuminated in green. And, you know, we celebrate this day in different ways. But I was really asking the question, you know, in my heart, like, how would St. Patrick want to be remembered or celebrated, uh, you know, you know, on this day, the day that he's supposedly the date of his death. And I really believe he just want Jesus Christ elevated. Because that's what Christ did when he walked. He, he, he pointed to God. And you look at the disciples and these great men and women of faith throughout the Bible. They, were, they walked in, in weakness or, you know, not very, you know, they weren't greatly educated. Um, you know, Jeremiah was a youth. You know, all of these great men and women of faith pointed to God and you saw God working through them. And it said that so many signs and wonders that uh, followed St. Patrick, it said that he even raised the dead. There was a writing that he had raised up to 33 people from the dead. But this is what wasn't St. Patrick doing it. This was the Holy Spirit. This was God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ performing miracles and you can't get, nearly you can't get a greater miracle than raising someone from the dead. But I believe if you ask St. Patrick what was his greatest miracle, I don't believe that would be it. I believe if you asked him now what was the greatest miracle, he'd say salvation. And so that's what he left for us, not just in Ireland, but for the world. He gave a gift through Jesus Christ and he pointed people to Christ and salvation came and he baptised thousands of people in this country. And Ireland has been responsible for taking the name of, of the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. You know, it's been, there's a rich, rich heritage with it. So what do we do as Christians now with this on St. Patrick's Day, with the memory of St. Patrick? You now we walk, we walk in the calling. So that's why I want to read just a few verses from the beginning of Romans. This is Paul. Paul writes six verses here. And I think this really ties in for me for the day. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. On the weekend I mentioned a verse, actually I said it was James 4.17, it's actually James 5.17. Uh, in that verse, it says that Elijah was a man just like us. So we have all of these great men, men and women of faith, St. Patrick included, that were just men and women just like us. And that's why Paul wrote here in verse 6, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. Like we're called to do the same things. We're called to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
You know, we're called to declare his name and preach the good news. And that's why it says, go out into all the world, preach the good news to every creature or all creation. But we're not all called to be preachers, but all of us are called to preach. And that's what happened with St. Patrick. He bought the truth. And he directed people to Jesus Christ. It was a simple faith, but the Holy Spirit followed him. And many signs and wonders happened as well. But because he brought that truth and that faith to this country, the world benefited from it. And a lot of people found Christ. And from that, people went out into the world and declared the good news, the gospel. And many people have been saved through that miracle of salvation that Jesus gave to us on the cross when he died and then he rose again, that we can come to him in repentance and he offer us forgiveness. Not that we deserve it, but he's given us grace to do that. I'm going to leave this message, I'm going to leave you with the last thing Patrick wrote before he died. This is the last sentence in his confession or his confession. And then I'm going to leave you with the words of Jesus Christ. He says this, I pray for those who believe in and have reverence for God. Some of them may happen to inspect uh, inspect or come upon this writing, which Patrick, a sinner without learning, wrote in Ireland. May none of them ever say that whatever little I did or made known to please God was done through ignorance. Instead, you can judge and believe in all truth that it was a gift from God. This is my confession before I die. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, at the very beginning of the church being birthed, Jesus said this to the disciples. Jesus said this, but he says it to us, to his church, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's our commission. That's the message today, to honour St. Patrick and St. Patrick's Day and we honour it we, we, everyone celebrates this day in different ways. But for me personally, I want to really celebrate St. Patrick for what he left, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Let the voice of the Irish continue to, to go out into the world declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord and that only salvation is in his name. For there is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved. That's Jesus Christ. So have a blessed public holiday. Happy St. Patrick's Day and use this day to point people to Christ and every day afterwards because the, nation, the, the gospel is to be preached to all nations. Have a blessed day. God bless. Happy St. Patrick's Day. See you Sunday.